Well, hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a review of this Mont Blanc 1858. Actually, it seems like this is the first review I've seen on YouTube because um, I wanted to buy this watch and as always I try to look at YouTube to get two, three or four different reviews to get off to sort of make up my mind is this a watch worth buying. But there was no, no reviews at all on YouTube. Um, so, bummer. Uh, so, as a service to others, uh, I'm doing this review. So, hopefully this will make up your mind whether you want it or not. So, let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to discuss is just uh, the brand. Uh, because Mont Blanc um, is really a brand that has become very, very serious over the last, I don't know, five years. They have been they have been serious all along about watches, but in, especially in the last five years or so, they've been really busy uh, acquiring the Minerva brand uh, put under the uh, Mont Blanc uh, name. And especially for my part, uh, they have the... Uh, D David Serrato is now the designer of uh, in, in uh, Mont Blanc. And for me, that made me very interested. Uh, he made me interested in Tudor, and with his move to Mont Blanc, it has made uh, me interested in Mont Blanc as well. Uh, so that's the first thing. The, the, the next thing is um, the price. Just let's get the price out of the way. Um, I think this price is about 2,490. That's the official price, um, more or less, uh, depending on where you buy it from. I got mine a little bit used, uh, you know, one month used, so I got a good discount on it. So I'm just happy about that. The next thing we will have a look at is the uh, the size, uh, which is for me a really important part of the uh, of any watch. And what you can see is if I do this, it is 40 millimeters, which is a sweet spot of mine. And this is the real this is the real deal here 11.5 that is a very very thin watch and it makes it so wearable on on the wrist um, there's just something about thin watches that appeals to me uh, when worn on the wrist and the lock to lock is 49.50 a little bit long but not a problem as long as it's below 50 for me that is great and of course the lock to lock is as with this kind of dimensions it's usually 20 so that is very common so that is a size that really appeals to me um, there are other watches in the market um, and you can see uh, this is a Hamilton this is a also a similar size a similar style watch but the size is 42 uh, and the lock to lock are too long and for me my my limit goes usually at 40 i don't want bigger watches than that i do make exceptions of course but if i can find it 40 that's a big plus for me instead of 42. so the hamilton at 42 is something i would refrain from buying even though i like the brand uh, and this coming in at 40 is just an extra plus for me really really nice so that is the size. They have um, in this series, uh, the 1858, um, they have other watches, as you can see, uh, especially the Geosphere is a really nice watch. Um, I really like that. That look is totally unique and it's special. Um, and also the chronographs are really nice. I, I really like their whole style. Um, but they're 42 and again i've tried them on and for me well it's up to you it's your opinions and but for me it doesn't work uh, it's 42 is too big and the lock to lock is way too big even this with 50 is stretching it so but these are too big and so i'm really happy that they made a 40. Uh, that just plays it into the sweet spot for me and for a lot of other guys so the next thing we're going to look at is complications. What kind of complications does this watch have? 
absolutely no complications whatsoever. No dates, no chronograph. Can you see something else missing? It might take you a few seconds to watch because uh, I didn't catch on for, I was researching this watch for days and days and suddenly it, it hit me. My God, there's no second hand. I'm not used to having a watch without second hand. Um, I prefer a second hand. Um, why haven't they put a second hand? You can see on the other, the other watches as well, there's no second hand, unless it's a chronograph. Um, yeah, why not? Well, it's a design decision. Um, would I agree with that? Well, if they ask me, would you like it with or without? I would choose with, I like the second hand. I can see the watch is working. Usually you, you remove the second hand when you're dealing with a dress watch, but this is not a dress watch. This is, this is like a vintage uh, inspired um, field watch or military watch. Um, and why is the second hand omitted? I don't know. Is it a big minus? Well, no, but it's a little bit strange, but it doesn't, didn't stop me from buying it. But it was a shock to me when I found out. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Um, so the fact is there is absolutely no complications at all to this. Um, the only thing, if you count that as a, as a complication, there's 100 meters uh, water resistant. Uh, it says here on the back dial, on, on, on the back case water resistant 10 bar, um, that's great. Uh, for me, that's probably even more useful than a second hand. So the next thing, what about the design? Well, I would say with this watch and not just this one, but, but the others one, uh, the others as well. Um, Serato has done it again. I, in my opinion, in Tudor, he found the Tudor DNA uh, and, and created the Black Bay and that was really successful. Um, and, and I have one of the Black Bays in Mont Blanc here. He's done it again. He's found that retro nostalgic Minerva look of, of the 1858 um, and, and he's created a watch with that strong DNA. I, I really think he, he hit the home run there as well. So I really think that is well done. Um, and I think that DNA uh, is really visible in these other watches you can see here. Um, and it's a strong look. I, I think they should continue that. I, I like the, um, the cathedral hands. I like the look of it. It's really nice. Um, so for me, it's a home run. Uh, of course, it depends on whether you like that cathedral hands or whether you like that military style and, and so on. But I, it's, it's, it has a strong DNA. You can't argue about that. The next thing I really like about the design here is um, you can see that dial. It is a gorgeous sunburst um, dial and it really plays in the light. I don't know if this really catches it, um, but it really plays. I, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit here. There's a texture to it. There's a ra radial um, sunburst movement in that dial. And it's, it's alive. It's like molten gold, you know, and, and it's really a 3D picture when you look at it and just for comparison um, if, if you look at this the Hamilton which is also very nice I like Hamiltons uh, I'm actually buying not this Hamilton but another one that's on the way but this dial is painted and uh, you, you you buy a paint a, a jar of paint and you you paint the uh, the walls with it this is flat this is, it's a nice color, but it's flat, totally flat. Um, and that's, that's problematic. And furthermore, you got the, the date function there. And for me, yeah, 
the world is divided between those who love date and those who hate dates. I think it ruins the watch with that splash of white there. Um, it's terrible for me. Um, but the color, the dial color is flat. And this one, in contrast, has no date that ruins the dial. So I really like that. And the dial is simply out of this world with this. It's not just sunburst, but that's that golden, you know, molten gold dial, which really shines here. That is truly something to look at. And that's one of the things that made me buy this watch. Also the, the hands, uh, the cathedral hands look more or less like you can see on the Hamilton. Um, I think their color of the, the, the hands and the dial doesn't really match that. It matches okay, but not really. Here, there's, it's not totally white, but it's off white hands with the gold. And I think that matches the, uh, the numbers much better. The numbers and the hands go together creates a, a much better look. The final thing that really hits the, the, the point for me is if you look at the Hamilton, which is, this is typical of a watch, the, the, the case is totally stainless steel, which is nice, good quality, um, but there's a certain blandness. You know, you got the dial, which is great. You got the case, which is great. Two things, and that's fine. Here, they have the stainless steel case and the dial and then they have sort of a, uh, a bezel of course you can't move it but it's it's a bezel and it's made of bronze and that creates you know a unique combination with the dial and also the, uh, the crown which is um, of course with the Mont Blanc logo the crown and the bezel and the dial works together in a very special way. I like the combination. It makes it a much, much more interesting watch when you have this kind of play between the materials. So that leads us um, on to the strap. The strap is made in-house uh, at their own and here's the buckle. This strap is simply gorgeous. I mean. This leather is so nice and it it's, um, has these different uh, colorations to it and it is padded and that really nice, you know, st uh, string here with that color. Uh, I think it just works so beautifully. And so if we turn it around, um, you will see this, which is a really nice case back. I mean, it's on your skin, so you don't see it. I just appreciate the, the work they've done here. I mean, they, they could have done something like this with the Hamilton. Uh, yeah, just plain, it's okay, it doesn't matter, it's, it's on the back. But creating a piece of art like this, with the mountains, with the axes, with the uh, compass, and this is really, really textured. This is really a joy to look at. So they just go that extra mile, I think. This is really gorgeous. And it gives that sort of, the point is it gives it sort of that mountaineering feeling that they're trying to evoke with the design and with the Minerva history. And they're trying to create that exploratory, you know, mountaineering vibe. And, and I think they're succeeding, it, succeeding in doing that. Although this watch is not something I would, it's not the first that comes to mind going on, on uh, hiking on Mont Blanc. Um, I've been to Mont Blanc, I like it, but I would wear a rocket watch. Um, this for me is a really nice watch I can wear uh, to the office or a good, uh, you know, not, on a, not on a mountain. But of course it, it, it's tested for that, it can, it can endure it of course, no problem. But it's more of a, not a dress watch, but it's more like an office watch for me. I, I really like the aesthetics of this, uh, but not as a mountaineering watch. So are there any negatives? Well, I can't find many. Um, I am very good at finding negatives usually, um, but I do find there's two. If, if you really want it, uh, I can find two things. 
the first thing is the um, the numbers. Uh, I am very, very big on. I'm a sucker for applied numerals. I really like it when the numerals are applied, and in this case, you can see it's not applied; it's printed. But it's not printed like you see in Hamilton, which is just you know flat, uh, flat printed numbers, black, and that's it. Um, I normally don't care for flat printed numbers like that. If you look here, and if I sort of zoom a little bit in, you can see the numbers are r a little bit raised after all because of the, uh, the loom. The loom is applied to the numbers and it makes it 3D like. So it's standing up applied to the dial, uh, creating a little bit of thick numbers and for me that's good so it's not a drawback after all because it's done much better than you can see on the Hamilton um, there is sort of a raised effect here and the the, uh, the loom application is done really really nice I, th I think that must be hard to do like this you know so precise um, that's really something I, I appreciate it makes also the 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 loom applied to it if it was just black printed numbers or white printed numbers, it wouldn't be as interesting. But this way, it's much more appealing to look at. So I really like these these numbers, these numerals here. The second thing, uh, so this the first one is not really a problem because I, I like it. But the second was um, the problem is not the watch. I actually wrote to Mont Blanc uh, because um, I asked them. Is there AR coating on the? Um, is there any AR coating? And the negative is they didn't reply. I mean, for for months or so they haven't replied me. So bad customer service. Uh, they don't write it. They don't specify it, and they don't want to reply me. Uh, terrible. Fortunately, there was a store in in my town, and I could see it firsthand and. I am a, I'm very big on AR, uh, probably because most of my watches are half of my watches are vintage, where you don't have that glare in in. Uh, but but with sapphire you have a really bad glare, and that really is a big irritation point for me. So I I got to have AR coating, otherwise I simply don't use the watch, um, and that's what I found. Maybe you you have it differently. But here, when I saw the watch, I could immediately see there is no um, there is no glare. There um, there must be some kind of AR coating. They didn't reply me, so I can't say it officially. But for me, there is no glare, and that means there must be some kind of AR coating. Probably one layer on the underside of the of the crystal of the sapphire. Um, it is a nice. Um, I've seen that it, it's it's a dome sapphire, but I don't really see much dome here. I mean, it's the, the, the surface here is totally flat for me, or or it's very very slightly domed. But it seems that it does the job. The AR coating is good, um, and it's sufficient. So I'm not bothered with it, uh, and I'm really happy that. That wasn't a problem. So that uh, more or less concludes the um, the um, the design features of this. Um, let's get to the uh, yeah the movement. The movement is a uh, MB twenty four dot fifteen, which is another way of saying it's a Salita SW two hundred. That is by no means a you know uh, attention grabber. It's just it works. It's sufficient for me. It's fine. It's 38 hours power reserve, which is okay. It's 28,800 vibrations, which is good, and it's tested and regulated. So it's an okay movement for me. Uh, nothing fancy, but sufficient. And so it brings us to the final thing the x-factor 
what happens with the combination of all of this? Well, I think the combination of all of this is that you really find a special watch. I mean, I've not seen many watches pulling this off. You know, stainless steel and the, the bronze vessel, this liquid gold dial, and it makes, and com in combination with this wonderful leather strap, for me, that combination is a dream. It wears perfectly due to the 40 millimeters and the 11 millimeters height. The looks are so classic and yet so freshly um, uh, made with, with the vintage look, but still freshly made with the bezel and it's totally new. So for me, I simply had to have it and I really love that I got it. And with this review, I just hope you can uh, make up your mind whether you want it or not. So uh, stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Bye.